Welcome everyone. Um, I'm Heidi Chow, I'm the head of business operations of ASCII. Welcome to joining our today's webinar. Um, today we have Kevin and Lawrence from B2Wise to introduce the DD Bricks and DD MLP with us. So now I will pass over to Kevin that they can start the presentation. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Kevin Boak. I'm the uh, global CEO of um, and I'm joined here with uh, with uh, my Hello, everyone. I think we have lost Kevin. It seems that we have lost Kevin. Yeah, I think we have lost Kevin, but I think it's okay. okay. Um, Lawrence, you can go ahead. Yeah, so hello, everyone. My name is Laurent. I'm, I'm the co-founder of B2Wise with Kevin. And uh, here we are for this amazing webinar. So uh, just to, to let you know if you can hear me well, can you click on the chat box? Hello, uh, uh, good morning. Yeah, just to, to be sure that everybody's hearing me well. Yes, hello. And uh, yeah, I, I wanted to review my, my uh, geography from, from Australia. So where do you come from? Just just let me just let us know uh, where do you come from? Uh, where are you based actually? Where, where are you based uh, right now in Australia? First, okay, very good. Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. <laughs> A lot of Sydney guys. Okay, there are two words huh, in, in in Australia: Sydney and Perth. Uh, that's that's good. Uh, very good. Melbourne, hey, come on. Uh, I, uh, I know, uh, I know well enough. Very good. So let's, uh, Kevin, you perfectly come back with us. So we've got people from Sydney, Perth, and Melbourne. Huh? So all the three big cities of Australia. Now you can hey, share your screen. Yeah. Sorry, sorry <laughs> hey. about that. I don't know what it's happened. It's okay. Technology. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm... I'm, so I'm, you I'm can shattered. share your screen and yes, then let me just my, com right my, my computer just decided at this moment to do an automatic reboot. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know <laughs> what to say. I don't know what to say. Okay. I'm just, I just, just got to get the presentation back up. Yeah, it's it's okay. Uh, okay. Okay, just one Sydney, second. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so we, we've got quite a big crowd and. Uh, Perfect, and I see that you are at ease with all the. So we will uh, we'll start the webinar uh, in a few seconds. So uh, feel free to to ask your questions when we are presenting, and at the end we will have enough time just to to answer all your questions, and we will view we will review all these questions. Okay. All right, hey, Lawrence, Very are good. you are you yeah. are you seeing the presentation? Yes, everything is okay, okay. now. Yeah, let's go. Okay, should we get let's going? Go. So, so today we're going to talk. Uh, Lawrence and I um, are going to discuss uh, uh, what is DD Bricks um, and and use that to try and explain a bit about uh, DDMRP and just also talk about why DDMRP um, has become so successful in in our lives for sure. So maybe let's get going, Lauren. Let me just uh, click the first page of the webinar, and here we go. So, so Lauren, let me ask you as we start this webinar off, um, just put into context, um, DDMRP. It's 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 all about uh, it's all about planning. So um, yeah. maybe just please answer the question: what what is the objective of all planners, Lauren? Yeah, in the supply chain world, the objective of a planner is to maintain balance. And when we say maintaining balance, it's maintaining balance about, uh, about inventory, service level, and everything within the capabilities of the business. Yes, because nobody have, uh, I've got full infinite capacity. So what if um, we get it wrong? We have too low inventory, then it's impossible to deliver the customer on time. And then the customers are not happy. What if we've got it wrong with having too much inventory? And then it's about cash issues. It's about uh, space issues. So that's, that's very important to get it right. And how do you get it right? 
the primary uh, process of every single uh, planner is to the replenishment process. They answer three questions. The first one is how much do I order? How much do I order to my plant, which will be the um, uh, production orders? How much do I order to my supplier? And then it will be the uh, purchase order. How much do I order to my um, warehouse? And then it will be transfer orders. The second question is um, when do I order? And this is a bit hard to know that, huh? and there are a lot of mechanisms behind that. So when do I order will bring to when do I receive the, the goods I want? And the last question is, where do I, hold, uh, I uh, order? Where do I, will, where do I put all this inventory uh, in, the, in the network? So we are uh, working with more than 70 customers worldwide uh, with a lot of success and all every single customer has the same pain. And depending on who you talk to in the company, because when you talk to the financial director, what they say, we, reduce, we need to reduce costs and inventory. When you talk to sales director, they are complaining always, but they are complaining about the complaints of people that say your forecasts are bad, are wrong. <laughs> yeah. And when you talk to the supply chain planner, they are gathering all the data from everywhere into Excel spreadsheets that uh, it's hard to maintain and to, so they spend too much time doing that. And when you talk to a production director, everything is changing all the time. They, they complain about too much viability. Uh, their pain is about a non-stable plan and priorities are changing all the time. And all these pains are directly going to the customer side uh, and the, the stability of the program, the program from the supplier. So that's hard, that's hard. And uh, we need to find solutions. So Kevin, what are the two solutions that we've got in the supply chain world? to make it great. Yeah, so so Lawrence, I mean, obviously this planning is just such a critical function for, for a lot of businesses. So um, as we've gone around the world, there's always uh, two approaches that, that companies take to, to solve the problem. Firstly, you, you have a, a formal approach um, and that is, uh, the, and, the, and the second one is an informal approach. Another way of looking at the, the formal approach is the, um, we refer to that as the scientific way. And another way of thinking about informal is the artistic way. And, and I look at the, the brain, I look at your brain, I look at the left side and the right side of the brain. On the, on the left side of the brain, you, you're all about systems, you're all about numbers, you're all about analytical thinking, you're all about logic. Um, and that's where you where you build up formal formal systems like a scientist. Whereas on the right side of the brain is that very soft expression side that you have. It's emotion, intelligence. It's just that being very creative, and and that's where you tend to be more artistic, uh, more informal in how you approach. So the way we see it always, every time we go into a company, there's always those two two ways. The companies either decide to go scientific or they decide to go artistic. Um, if they've gone autistic, which happens a lot, um, you become very reliant on an individual planner. There's this, there's this guy in your company, and um, he just seems to always make the right call. He, he understands the, the products very well. He understands all the tribal knowledge of the business. He's hell of a good at uh, gathering information and, and managing uh, the, the different relationships and, and silos that exist between the different departments. Um, he takes one look at those numbers and miraculously, he just spots the problems. Um, and above all, he, he cares a lot about the business and, and he becomes the, becomes the hero um, um, in the business. Um, and that's what happens. But, but sadly, uh, what happens is, is companies depend a lot on that individual. Uh, but sadly, what we find is that every, um, every hero has his day. 
And at some point in time, um, that hero will leave. And then companies are left with no process, no system, and, and worst of all, no hero. And that's normally when, when we get called in um, to, to say, okay, you know, what do we actually do? How do we, how do we solve this, this problem? And this is where companies now start saying, well, maybe it's time that we start becoming more scientific. And this is where we've now got to look at this informality and start building reliable processes that, that protect us. And this is where we start relying on science. Um, so, so what happens is we look at their planning process, we look at the individu individuals and we want to protect them. So, so how do we protect them? We, we make sure they're trained. They, we, we make sure the data that they use is good and, and very easily available. So it's very easy to be updated and they're not having to go and spend hours and hours collecting data in, in Excel. We, we review the work with them. Um, you know, how once a week we sit down, once a month we sit down and we implement a continuous improvement mindset um, within the company. Um, and normally companies, when they, when they start, they'll, they'll start um, at, as being informal and their objective will be to become very formal. And there, there'll be a journey that they go on. And every time, every company that we deal with, they, they have a very common path that they go to. So how do you move from being informal to formal? You, you start off by defining your method, your methodology. What is the, the, the process, the, the, the way that I'm going to do this planning function that is, that is so critical to the business? Once you define that method, you know, what am I going to do? The next thing you need to do is you need to train your people. Um, you need to make sure they understand that method um, so that they can follow it in their day-to-day -day, uh, um, operations in the business. Once you've trained the people, you now need to make sure that you've got good data. Um, so you've got to make sure that you try and automate that flow of data. So they're not spending hours and hours trying to collate data into a form to make the decision. Um, we have enough tools and methodologies today in the world that allow for that automation of the, of the data. Once we've automated the data, they need to look at the data. And then they need to start fixing the data. Now, now you'll notice here that I fix data only once I look at it. So it's amazing how many companies would come across that will say to us, oh, sorry, we can't start the automation of data because the data is wrong. And um, it's amazing, five, six, seven years, I'll go back to them and they'll say, hey, have you started your, your, your program to become formal? And they say, no, no, we're still trying to fix the data. So, you know, fixing data, I definitely see it as an activity that happens after you've automated it. Because if you've automated, people can see the data and they now know what to actually try and fix. So the fifth step that we always see is very important is document the process. It's so important that you start writing that down and structure. Every scientist needs to take his notes, needs to take his recordings, and needs to make sure that that, that procedure to repeat the process is documented and well written down. Who does the, the forecasting? Who does the ordering? When do they do it? By what time do they have to do it? And this is where a lot of times companies will start using lean principles to try and design a process that is very efficient. So, you know, things happen on time and everyone knows what is actually happening in the time. And we don't end up waiting for someone to sign the forecast off before we can place the order. So it's very important that those procedures get documented. Um, the next thing is you need to run a continuous improvement process. Um, if you think that you are going to get your planning processes right on day one, just because you've decided on the methodology or implement a system, the answer is no. So you have to have this mindset of continually sitting down and reviewing the processes. Um, and this is where the principle of Pareto comes in. Um, because it's so critical that not only do we meet, but we must also resolve the issues. So we always say to guys, just, just capture the top five issues every week and just then make sure you actually resolve them. And if you do those five every week, um, it's amazing how fast that you, you would accelerate to, to solve the problem. And then finally, you, you need to run formally, uh, 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 formal meetings every month where you sit down, you review the process, and you re and review the KPIs. Um, and as this is probably the biggest spend 
in companies, it's very critical that uh, senior management show commitment to those meetings. You know, I always ask senior guys in the rooms when I, when I present to them is, is how often do they actually attend these meetings? Because if you don't actually attend the meeting, you don't show that you care about the, the, the planning process and how people spend money. You have to ask yourself a question, will the people doing the job care? So it's so critical that we actually show our support to it. So this is the, the process that we see a lot of companies go through um, in doing their process. And this is what they try and get right. So what I'm going to talk about today, we haven't got to, to time to, to talk about lots of things. But what I'm going to talk about today, these two steps. One is what methodology? Um, and this is probably the most important decision that you make in the process. And then secondly, once you define that methodology, how do you go about training people? Um, because at the end of the day, uh, infantry management, supply chain planning is a people's process. Uh, software does not manage infantry, people do. So it's absolutely critical that we train those people and they understand how they work. So let's start with the de define your define your methodology. So, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard the, the word VUCA. Um, we, we live in a, a VUCA world, and it's very important that we, we choose a methodology that will, that will work in this, in this world that is very volatile, very uncertain, um, very complex, and, and very ambiguous. You know, it's amazing every time we, we go into the market today and talk, so many people talk about a global event that has caused supply chains to stop. Um, in Europe, the, the big one was the blocking of the Suez Canal. And still today, people will say, oh, you know, I can't get my electronic components because they were on a container that was blocked in the Suez Canal. Um, we, we lived through a COVID period where suddenly for two, three months, the demand completely changed. Um, and we had to respond to that in, in, in such a way. Um, and then a lot of people, I don't think, expected the demand to come back as fast as it actually did. Um, so you got all these things going on, the, you know, the, the, the volume of data that exists in the world is very, very hard. And you've got to somehow use all that information to, to make good decisions. So if you go on the internet and type in, you know, supply chain planning and, and how to plan for a, a VUCA world, um, so many different uh, techniques and technologies comes up. Um, and, and these things are coming on board, uh, things like deep analytics, uh, things like demand sensing, you know, just sensing that change in demand so that I very quickly react my supply chain to the business. I, I think every time I present to a boardroom, the uh, CEO or the COO will stand up and say, oh, we need artificial intelligence in our lives um, because there are, to be fair, a huge amount of clever um, applications that exist in the world today that can really provide us really good insights into, into what is happening. Um, there are things like multi-echelon optimization, um, you, you know, which is where we, we look at a supply chain and one single solve, we find at some moment in time, the perfect safety stock and replenishment cycle for every single node within the supply chain. So these technologies exist. Um, we, we use them, we, we, we calculate numbers, and then what a lot of companies do is they take the outputs of those technologies and they load them into their ERP system. Um, and if any of you guys use an ERP system, you'll know that at the heart of your ERP system is sitting this uh, concept called MRP, um, Materials Requirements Planning. Um, and that is what we then use and it runs and it uh, computes the, the answer today. But anyone that uses uh, uh, MRP systems, um, a lot of times we walk into clients and we'll say to them, so how's MRP going? And they will say, well, you know what? We've actually stopped using it. And we've now, for whatever reason, um, have stopped and we use an Excel spreadsheet. And, and the, the sad fact is that 80, 90% of the clients that we come across have really augmented. I mean, that whole use of the Excel spreadsheet has become very, very important um, in, the, in their lives. And you have to ask the question is, is what's wrong with MRP? You know, <laughs> What is it, what's gone wrong with it? Why, do, why are we struggling so much with it? And, and this is where I got very interested in DDMRP in my own career, is that, um, you know, 
um, MRP is something that I've used since I can remember. Um, since I was at a, a student at uh, Johannesburg University in 1995 and before uh, I went out to Australia in 1997 where I worked with uh, BHP um, implementing their MRP process. I've, I've worked with this subject and it's something that I've understood very well. Um, MRP was invented by a guy by the name of Joe Orlick. It's a, a very powerful tool because it, it gives you a, a time phase plan. It gives you a, a multi-level bomb capability so at your each different level of your bombs or all your networks you can see exactly what the dependent demand is um, and if used properly you know this is uh, what it will do is it will synchronize your components it will reduce your infantries and it will improve your priorities so when Joe Orlick invented this um, this is what he he sold and he, he wrote this book uh, that he put out into the market. Um, and that's an MRP is, is, is what I think every single person in the, in the world today use. The scary thought about MRP was that it was, the idea of uh, MRP was conceived as early as 1950. Uh, with the advent of a computer. And what you're seeing here is the first uh, Fortran computer. Um, the first thing that, it, that a computer was used for in a business was to write logic. Uh, to actually help people plan uh, businesses more better. Um, in the 1970s, um, MRP had uh, become faces. Um, uh, ERP systems took over the world and um, every single company in the world had to implement a, a, a ERP system. And in the heart of all those ERP systems was, was MRP. And MRP today has just got global dominance. And I always say to people, that um, you just look around this room, you know, we're doing this presentation, look at your computer, look at your mouse, look at your mobile phone, look at the desk you're sitting at, look at the ceiling, look out the window, look at the glass of the window. Every single thing that we see in, today, in today's world has been planned by MLP. Um, it is that that global dominances. And it's funny that we are using this technology that was conceived and coded in the 1960s in, in today's world. We, we're trying to use this fundamental approach in a, in a lot of our planning applications to, to, to get it right. And that's a bit of a scary thought. And I think this is my, when I first heard this with DDMRP, it was my first thing. Because I, I lecture at some of the, the big universities around the world, Warwick Manufacturing Group, uh, uh, Polytech Hong, uh, Hong Kong University. And I realized that, you know, this, the slides, everything I use to teach MRP is what I was taught in, in 1995. Uh, nothing had changed. Um, and I suppose that's where you've got to say, well, you know, has the world changed since, since 1995? Um, um, and you just look at the advents of all the different methodologies and technologies and artificial intelligence challenges and the answer is, the answer is yes, it has changed. So, so what happened with MRP um, in, in uh, 2010? Um, two people, uh, Carol Potak and Chad Smith. Um, Carol used to be the head of um, 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 Apex in America for many years, and, and Chad is a theory of constraints lean guy. Um, uh, they got a phone call from one of the publishers that owned the book on MRP, uh, um, Audix uh, MRP, and they said, hey, you know, this book hasn't been updated for, for 20 20 or 30 years so maybe it's time that we actually um, added updated and fixed the methodology so they were asked to go and investigate um, do some research and and come back with an addition to 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 um, to to Orlix, the original Orlix MRP book which you can go buy and it teaches you all about MRP um, so, so they did that um, and being the lean experts, um, they went and investigated and over the space of uh, five, six, seven, I think it took them a good eight years of investigation and reviewing of going on. They, they came up with this concept called uh, DDMRP. It, it wasn't uh, something new. I mean, what it did was they took MRP and they said, what was the purpose of MRP to give us a time phase plan? 
um, which is still very important. So it wasn't thrown away. Um, they then said, well, you know, what else exists today? And they looked into the market and there were concepts like lean. So most companies that will go into will run MRP in distribution. But when it comes to factories, the, lead, the, the, the factory will say, sorry, uh, we, we operate on lean. Um, you know, and that's the whole lean principle. So the, they then looked at the, the, the whole concept of theory of constraints, which is how do you, how do you maximize throughput through a system? And how do you best buffer and position infantry in that system to make sure that you maximize the outputs? And that was a lot what um, Ellie Goldratt uh, did in his, his book, The Goal, which a lot of people have, have written, or uh, uh, A Critical Chain, which is another book that he wrote that explains all the, the issues to why things go wrong. The, the concepts like Six Sigma, which is all about maintaining variability, the biggest, the biggest curse on any supply chain is variability. And the moment our uh, demand variability or supply variability goes wrong, our, our plans go wrong. Um, so they took all those concepts and they sat down and they worked it out and they came up with this methodology called uh, DDMRP. Um, and that methodology has now, um, the, the book itself has been rewritten three times. So if you go onto, onto Google and type in DDMRP or, or Amazon, um, you can buy that book online. And, um, and that's, that's what uh, the book has happened. So what has happened with DDMRP? Um, well, um, the first thing that's happened with DDMRP um, is, uh, is that right? Yeah. So, 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 so that's what the what the book is. So uh, DDMRP itself has uh, has has gone quite has got quite aggressive. Laurent, you'd know yourself. You you ran the first uh, DDMRP project in France um, back in uh, 2015, and you know DMRP has become the mainstay project in France. Um, so when I met you, we were joking about it last night at dinner. Yeah. I met you at the first supply chain event. Um, this is in, in, in 2015, yeah. and you were yeah. running around saying, did MRP is the future? And I was an MRP guy, you know, selling my MEIO software. And I, I sort of giggled at you right up until the, the big presentation happened. So I paid for a presentation and about 10 people arrived. And in the corner, I think you were doing a presentation on DDMRP. And I think the entire conference was listening to your, your presentations. I thought, hmm better actually go and understand what's going on here. But, uh, but, but you know, five years later and 70 odd projects later, including some of the biggest companies in France, um, we've, we've seen the benefits. So what we did is just, we just asked people to say like, what is the big difference between DDMRP and MRP? And, um, and these are the six things that we, we came up with when we, we thought about this, is the first thing is that MRP is a end-to-end -end, um, system. It's a fully connected system. Um, and what happens is with that fully connected system, uh, variability process uh, through that system um, to actually create the order. And the same thing with uh, orders and information. Information flows through that system and that information just flows uh, unheeded through the system. So the first thing that DDMRP does is it says, um, and this is a very well-known concept, if you want to uh, uh, stop variability passing through the business, you have to decouple the business. So you have to, instead of just allowing it, you've got to put these decoupling points uh, in your operation. So the, the first thing that DDMRP does is D DDMRP decouples the supply chain. It actually physically puts breaks in the actual supply chain and, and it, it introduces new methods and new calculations to not do a single solve, but to multiple little MRP runs um, in the actual supply chain. And that's a very, very important Part of DDMRP. The second thing that DDMRP does is anyone that's used MRP will know that priorities are, are normally set based on the forecast and based on a due date. So everything is due date and normally it's a due date of when you need the forecast bar. Um, and it, it, MRP itself was never written to be an execution tool. And that's why in operations, we find that lean actually dominates because it's very executional based. So in DDMRP, a big thing is that we, we, we don't use the forecast uh, to set priorities. Um, we use the buffers. So every single part gets a buffer and we look at the priority of that buffer. So how deep are we into the buffer? And we use the, a combination of actual orders. So we try and look at the actual demand. So in DD, that 
demand driven actually stands for actual orders and not demand driven forecasts is the actual orders so we use a combination of how 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 deep how um, unfill is the buffer and a combination of the actual orders to set priorities um, and I think one of the biggest benefits you get from DNMP particularly in a production environment is that um, priority of what you need to make driven by the actual cu customer order and the next thing that DDMRP does is that there's no optimization. I, 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 you know, I spent my career running a multi echelon optimization uh, programs where you would build these very fancy algorithms that you, you made a whole bunch of assumptions on and you put them in and, and you'd ran one solve and it would it solve the entire supply chain uh, for you and tell you the safety stocks and replenishment cycles at every node within the, within the supply chain. DDMRP is not like that. So DDMRP does no optimization, but it does a concept called synchronization. So between the nodes or between my decoupling points or between my buffering points, Points, it just looks to make sure that those two points are in, in sync and, um, and each little calculation does that and, and that's keeping every little point in sync when you because it's constantly trying to stabilize the system by putting it back into a stabilized process creates a huge amount of stability. And, um, and that's some of the comments we hear from people is that, you know, we, we just don't change production schedules anymore. We, we haven't broken the plan forever um, because that's how powerful that synchronization uh, can actually be. Another thing that's very important is in my own world, you know, uh, before I started B2Wise, we, I'd run, you know, 200 odd projects and very little time was spent in manufacturing because the fact is that MRP didn't really work in manufacturing. So for the first time, um, you actually now got a methodology that works very well for distribution as well as for manufacturing. And you now have a single tool that actually talks. And um, it's incredible when we go to customers and you find planners and production people talking a very common language, looking at a very common system um, to actually produce a result and really breaks down that silo, um, which really exists in companies, but now you've got a single system that everyone is now, now working off. The, another thing about DDMRP, which for me probably, uh, I, I did a presentation a couple of hours ago um, to, to a company in Australia, and it, it's the first thing that people say when they look at DDMRP is they see color. They, they see this red, this yellow, and this green. Um, and that's one of the real beauties of DDMRP is the simplicity of color, is this color creates its own language um, and it is exceptionally visual and it's hell of easy to talk to people about and it's, it, it really creates a very simple environment. So the, the modification of the, the, the process um, actually gets simplified because of the way these, these colors get used. And I think the, the funny thing is every single case study that we'll talk and we'll present is the, the people that present will always come back to this point. It is just so much simpler. Our planners understand what they're going on. Um, and we, we, we're using these colors very, very effectively in our supply chains to get it right. Um, and that's a very powerful, powerful statement. And the final thing that I always find is uh, still today, you know, we speak about training and training people. It's incredible how many planners that we deal with on a day to day basis that have not been formally trained. Um, you, you know, there's bits of different information, uh, um, ASCM or, or ASCII have got the, these training programs they put out there. Um, but, you know, actually people doing the job, um, you don't just go to universities and say, hey, you know, teach me on MRP. It's not, there, there's no course on it. You, 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 you find bits of courses in it that you then pick up and you learn as you go. And that's how I was, you know, we had a, a simple operational course at university where we learned a bit about MRP, but, you know, it wasn't like a huge effort that went into it. But when we, when I started DDMRP, one of the things that really hit me were the training courses. Uh, I sat down through a, a, a 450 50 slides um, that actually taught me a lot that I, you know, I'd been in planning for years and it taught me a lot about how it actually worked and how processes and what lean was and theory of constraints and what MRP does. 
Um, so it was really good. And what has been great is that in the last couple of years, um, um, ASCM themselves have adopted it. So if you want, you can go into ASCM, log on, and you know you can go and do a DDMRP course. And they've got a number of courses that have been written, the planners, the leaders, um, and the, the boardroom, the SNOP process. So that those are the big differences that we see um, with, with DDMRP. Um, the results is that you know to date uh, 9,000 people have been have been trained. It's incredible. Um, you know we as we as an organization, the amount of people that we're training, our, our training programs are completely full. We actually can't find enough trainers right now to train people on on the methodology. Uh, the companies that have adopted it, you know, any company that's running um, um, MRP, um, you know, DDMRP will apply. Um, and you, you can look at, we've got really powerful case studies across each one of those, those businesses. You know, the, the results, you know, you, you, as you would expect, you know, uh, people are saying, hey, our customer service rates are, are you know, above 99%. Some of our clients have said to us, hey, for nine months, we never missed an actual sales order. You know, you think, wow, that's, that's quite good. Um, your, your lead times, because of the way you plan, are collapsing. So things are getting made faster. And when you make things faster today's world, you know, it's it's very important getting things quicker to markets. Um, infantries get right sized, you know, a lot of particularly in manufacturing, we drain all the work in progress out of the manufacturing sites. Um, and that really has a big impact on the amount of infantry. And then the final thing is our plans just don't go wrong, you know. So when a plan goes wrong, it's an emergency. So we end up spending more money on air freight and more money on all different things, and that's what we just don't do anymore. Um, because we really have a plan that works. And if our plan works, we don't have to have emergencies to, to resolve and guarantee that service level. And finally, the, the big thing is the, the ease and use is that, you know, planners uh, see priorities. It's very simple to know what to do. The signals are very clear. They understand that there's no more black box and they achieve the, achieve the results. And the one thing that uh, we notice in all our clients is that uh, when they implement DDMRP is none of them use Excel anymore. You know, that signal integrity from the product is very strong and, and, they, and they, they, they get the results. So that's what we see as the differences between um, uh, it, MRP and DDMRP and the journey that we've gone through and why it's become so, so powerful. Uh, but step one on the process, you know, once you've, let's say you decide to go with the DDMRP as a method or investigate it, step number one is training. Um, you, you have to understand how this method works. And uh, the Demand Driven Institute that they run the methodology, they've developed these really comprehensive training programs. Um, and it's a two-day course, and it uh, covers the five steps of DDMRP. Um, the positioning, the protecting, the um, and then the the pulling of the um, um, of the infantry. It teaches you the DDS and OP concepts, um, how you analyze the operating model, how it actually works. It introduces the color concepts, it introduces all the calculations. It, it introduces the the concept of an ADU inside of the operational zone, an average demand signal. It teaches you how to calculate it. It shows you how forecast get used so it's a really comprehensive uh, training course and you know as i say you know i think you know it, it's i'd even go as far as to say as i would say ten thousand people have been have been trained and and Lawrence, i mean you are a are a top five uh, a top uh, five instructor of dmrp top, for 10, the yeah, the, top <laughs> 10 sorry I, yeah I, top I 10 so it's okay <laughs> for the for the last uh, the last four years so maybe yeah. you, you you tell people what is how do you feel yeah. about the, the DDMRP training? So the, this DDP training is so great because you've got so much content. It's about 470 slides in two days. So you see it's going very, very fast. And it, it's all the mechanic of the, the, the demand-driven uh, MRP. So when you get there, what, what's happened is uh, the managers uh, when, when people uh, do the training and then come back to the office, the manager says, hey, I've heard that these DD something do a great job in, in increasing the service rate, in decreasing the inventory. So please, I want you to apply it right now. And then comes the, the issue. It's, people are saying, hey, how, how do I start? 
where, where do I, I start with? And, and they struggle to get the concept into reality. They struggle in, into applying all this nice methodology, nice concept into their day-to-day life. And what we do, we rely on Benjamin Franklin's quote on the training. Tell me, and I forget. For those who have children, huh, you, you know that. Teach me, and I remember. It, it, it keeps in the, in the head, and people remember, but it's not enough to make them into a motion more. So involve me, and I learn. And involving comes to the, to the hand, to all your feelings, all your emotion. And to learn really something, you need to be engaged. You need to be involved in something that push you, uh, put you into uh, action mode. And, and that's where we have uh, invented the DD Bricks. DD Bricks, it's a workshop. Uh, we can play it in, um, in, um, uh, in personal, I mean, uh, with Lego bricks. And we can play it as well in a remote mode. Uh, with bricks, virtual bricks. And in this simulation, what we'll do, we will apply all these concepts into a very uh, understandable supply chain. And we will transform the supply chain step by step, going from a standard uh, forecast driven supply chain to a human driven supply chain with all the steps of DDM. People feel, people laugh. We have fun on this workshop. And we have trained uh, thousands of people with this workshop. And, and when they put it into practice, everything comes simple, clear. What do I have to do? And a lot of companies are even um, built in this uh, training inside their academy. Uh, we've got Michelin. We've got Coca-Cola, Louis Vuitton is, is in, as internal trainers where they, they will teach not only the supply chain, the operation, the plant team, they will, they will all also uh, train finance, HR, um, uh, all the, 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 the engineering team so that they could understand what's happening in the supply chain side. These daily bricks, workshop is a one day workshop so and it's accessible for everybody and then they will every single people in the company will understand what's happening in the supply chain side and how do we achieve this amazing result so that's that's really really just uh, very interesting to to make it great and that's all the single start of every single project that we have is a daily bricks workshop so people understand it clearly and we want to give you a present today huh? kevin what do you uh, think about it's very, that very, <laughs> large, it's very important to give things away i'm right there with you so yeah so, so we want to offer you a daily bricks workshop so we, we've got actually two daily bricks workshop planned for uh, australia especially for you guys and just, just go and take your phone and, uh, and, 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 uh, and see the, this QR code and register. Uh, you take this uh, ASCI 2021 uh, promotion code and it's 100% discount for you. I mean, we cannot do more than that. <laughs> it's amazing. Huh? So that's, that's the first step of all this uh, supply chain uh, transformation. It's it's for yeah. you, yeah, yeah, and and you know to be fair, just I mean, uh, B two was I mean we we so we've run some really big global transformation projects now where you know 40, 50 countries worldwide, and fundamental is every single one of those projects that we've done has started with with training, and um, if you don't get you know if you if you don't get that thought way right. Um, if you don't educate the people, if you don't really get them to understand those concepts, uh, you fail. 
And, and that's our message to everyone. You know, I don't know if you've heard about DDMRP. It will open up the floor to some, some questions. So please, if you've got any questions, please just uh, uh, type them and, and we'll, we'll respond to them. But, uh, you know, DDMRP, it, it is new. It's exciting. Um, in, in France today, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, if you're in planning, that's it. You know, it's just the, the most defunct uh, presentation that you've got, a uh, methodology that you've got, and it's just been used everywhere. And we're seeing in, in Spain, um, it's accelerating. We see now in America, the amount of people being trained um, is just accelerating because of how um, ASCM are taking it on. I think they, I, I saw on the DDR uh, uh, LinkedIn page now, there's something like 13,000 people as part of the LinkedIn community that have been, been trained so we'll we'll see the official new numbers but but we do see it coming uh, very aggressively and very fast and if you want to understand it and you want to benefit from it um you know step number one is 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 the training and that's yeah, what is that's where, you've, that's where you've got to start. yeah it's software before software but still okay. software is important and uh, jeffrey is yeah. has a question how difficult uh, is to integrate DDMRP into a, your ERP. So, uh, Kevin, for sure, you. Huh? <laughs> sure, no, I'll, I'll answer this question. So, the, the fundamental thing, so let's just talk about DDMRP. So, first thing about it, um, um, SAP themselves have uh, acknowledged that uh, DDMRP is, is, is their future. So, if, you, if you're lucky enough to be on S4 HANA, um, you now there's a DDMRP modules that sit. A lot of the SAP clients we sit um, actually sit on ECC six, and uh, quite a few of them are a little bit nervous about uh, upgrading, um, so they're not really jumping out uh, their skins to to do that. So obviously um, DDMRP replaces the MRP, so it replaces that calculation. Um, so when you do it, you, you have to turn off MRP. Um, you don't have to do it for every item. Um, um, in SAP, the way we do it is using the MRP type. So we, we create an MRP type. So you can say, how do you plan your items using PD or uh, NB or the, all the different codes that exist, uh, you know, non-buffered or uh, reorder points or um, uh, basic MRP calculations, we just very simply introduce a new planning type called MRP, uh, DDMRP. And then when you click to DDMRP, um, we've written a complete integration with SAP that the, uh, the data automatically comes down into our, uh, our stand or loan application, and then you start planning the products. And then what we do is we automatically asynchronously load back all the works orders, planned orders, and distribution orders back into back into the ERP system. Um, and uh, we've yeah. we've yeah, yeah we've written that process for not only SAP but also for Dynamics. So our two main client bases are SAP and D three six five. Um, yeah, that be, we, that because we Kevin, what, what we didn't say uh, it's that B2Wise is, is a training company and a software company. Yeah, we, we, we push, we were pushing a lot on the, the, the training the side training. because it's yeah. so important. But but then we've got a software that is fully embedded with SAP and Dynamics, and for all the other uh, ERP systems, we've got a very simple way to connect. So. Yeah. Extract data from the ERP system, take the decisions into B2Wise, which is uh, uh, you, you, you delegate all the decisions of planning and the priorities inside B2Wise, and then the, the data comes back into your uh, MRP, uh, ERP system to follow up with the, all the orders. So that's, that's as simple as that connection. Yeah. That's, that's so Okay, so Laurent, I just see there's another question about um, do we have any experience with uh, DDMRP when a business uses uh, um, um, SAP RBP rather than S4 uh, MRP for planning? Um, so the, the only experience I've got is that you know the companies we've dealt with or have been looking for alternatives to um, SAP RBP for for planning. Um, I know that if you if you go on the on the um, on the uh, DDR website, you'll see that there are um, 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 SAP 
DDMRP tools out there that you can look at. So if, if, if you're, you're convinced about staying in the actual framework, you can you can look at it. But if, sadly, we don't specialize in, in SAP ourselves. So we don't we don't do that. OK. Yeah. And and, and uh, in the DDMRP world, there are uh, 32 applications that are proposing this uh, this uh, uh, DDMRP option. So it's yeah. quite interesting how dynamic is uh, yes. the, 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 the switch to from standard MRP to DDMRP. And uh, we've got a question from, from uh, Ro Shanak. Uh, does it mean that DDMRP is the next generation of MRP? Yes, it is. <laughs> Definitely, it is. And uh, the DDMRP is the next generation of MRP as well as the, the step ahead for Lean, Six Sigma, and Theory of Constraint. Because it, yeah. it helps, as Kevin presented, it helps embedding all the, the best, um, best uh, in-class methodologies, industrial management methodologies that we all know. And it, yeah. it's all connected, and then it helps uh, having the, the next step yeah. of, of planning. Okay, and uh, uh, Lauren, there's another question from Paul about um, just very simply, what issues cause a DDMRP project to be derailed? Um, so oh, yeah. um, this is a, a very common question. Uh, I have a, 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 a frequently asked questions that we distribute, um, but the this for me there's two. The the first thing is, as rightly pointed out, you are replacing MRP. Um, so if you don't have a very effective integration process, um, it's a problem. Planners can't be waiting until 10, 11 o'clock in the day for systems to update because data only comes, you know, as a manual extract process at a certain time in the day. So that's a big thing. If you don't really resolve that uh, automation process, it becomes a problem. And that's why we've we deal with an example a massive sap global development house that comes in and helps us to get that integration right because it is it's a big derailleur the second big derailleur of ddmrp is um, ddmrp like mrp it's it's a new methodology um, and a lot of the clients we we go into um, they they work in uh, industries with a lot of nuances um, a classic one is shelf life um, you know, the actual standard methodology of DDMRP, like the standard methodology of MRP, uh, doesn't cater for shelf life. But as people have used it, you know, modifications and customizations and innovations have happened uh, to make that work. So one of the challenges that you do face sometimes is if you're in a really specialized infantry uh, um, industry and there is some sort of innovation that you require, um, you, you've got to make sure you get those innovations right. Um, and that's what we we try to do as a company is we, we say to people, you know, step number one, you need to innovate and you need to solve those problems. Now, our experience is that when you synchronizing as opposed to optimizing, when you, you, you haven't got this big um, uh, supply chain that's got multiple layers to it, it's a lot easier to innovate and a lot simpler in that environment that is that is not optimized as a, that is that is more synchronized um, but if you don't get those uh, those right um, that causes a lot of problems and that's where yeah. a lot of our, our pilots have failed i mean we've we've done probably 80 pilots and two or three of them have failed and it's always because integration of data and we we struggle to um, get some of those innovations, some of the industries um, into the product in within time to to make those pilots successful. So I hope that answers yeah. your question, Paul. And and uh, I would have a, a one point uh, more is that uh, when the, the the pilot is down and the, we've we've demonstrated the value uh, inside the company. Then there are other risks that, that are very, very obvious is that if so top managers don't have this supply chain uh, thinking about flow, then th there are some, it can we can have some issues because they can take decisions that are uh, against the flow. Against the flow, it means that they will increase the lead time, increase the minimum order quantity, and then, it, if they don't understand the flow, uh, 
the, the, the supply chain is in danger and um, DDMRP implementations are in danger. So what we highly recommend after uh, the demonstration into a pilot is to go ahead and train the, the top managers just so that they can understand what's about DDMRP, what's about the flow and the decision process that has to be updated, upgraded as well uh, to embrace this new methodology. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's a very important tool to have all the benefits for long term. And uh, a lot of companies we are working with uh, are very successful uh, for long term. I mean, uh, um, we are working with uh, Air Liquid and for four years in a row, they are decreasing the inventory, they are upgrading the service level, and they, they have in their, uh, in, in their hands all the, the, the right um, um, levers to manage the, the level of inventory in the supply chain. And that's what is very interesting. When you've that got is very interesting. Managers on board. Yeah, okay. So I think there's any more questions. So guys, thanks very much. You know, my final parting words to everyone is, um, you know, I've been doing supply chain planning for for 25 years and I worked around the world and I, I've been surprised, you, you can believe me or not believe me, but I, I've been surprised at just how aggressive and steep the growth of DDMRP has been. Um, and it's, in, in my opinion, it is, it's, it's going to become a global thing that is going to happen. And, you know, right now, the most important thing I think that companies need to do is just understand, you know, more and more when we talk to companies, um, people have heard about it. You know, there's so much noise that goes on on LinkedIn. Yeah, you know, people have heard about it. But step number one is start by understanding. And Lawrence, uh, well done to you for inventing Diddy Bricks. Um, because when, you know, the global supply chains uh, directors of uh, Michelin and Louis Vuitton stand up and say that, you know, it's their primary change management tool um, because it really helps people understand the deep concepts of DDMRP. Um, it's, it's very satisfying. So I would implore anyone on the call, um, you know, if you've got a couple of hours, uh, it does take... Um, five six hours to to play it um just go online um you've got that free code I'll, I'll i'll put it back up here i'm sure that you'll you'll get it and and register you know um and just go and experience it and um if you it, it's it's where you start you know if if um if that makes sense and that's where you want to go um that's where how we work with with clients so so that's step number one yeah um, please, you know, go and register and, and we'll show you in that game exactly how DDMRP actually works and teach you some of the underlying philosophies of, of how it works. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for your time. I, I hope you gain some insights that will, will help you in your day-to-day -day jobs. All right, and thank okay. you, Heidi. Thank you, everybody. And, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, good. Thank you. Speak thank to you. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye, -bye.